Hey, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Picture. What's your friendly neighborhood? It is me. You know me. I'm Cardi. Welcome to a very special Christmas Eve episode, baby. Let's go. We are live. Hopefully you guys are having a good day, a good week. Hopefully everything is blessed with you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, we're getting into frameworks for success in 2024. I think it's I think it's a perfect day to talk about the frameworks that we can get into in order to be successful in 2024. I've talked about some of this stuff today before, but I'm putting it together in a way that's really going to give you a head start on what you should be doing next year. So let's get into frameworks for success in 2024. All right. Welcome, by the way, if you're watching me live, thank you for hanging out with us here live back at my desk after some time in Montreal, which was very, very fun and very necessary. Thank you, everybody who watched my live stream from my Airbnb in Montreal. All right, let's go. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. Okay, so the first framework for success in 2024 is standing out and that's we have to stand out and in this completely saturated market when it comes to professional photography standing out is imperative the bar for success in photography in 2024 is going to be significantly higher than all years previously. We live in the most image savvy time that there's ever been. Everybody knows that photography can be manipulated by AI. Everybody knows that photography can be manipulated by Photoshop. 2024, we need to figure out a way to navigate this very evolving landscape. So standing out understanding the technology technology technological advancements in photography and most importantly engaging with a photography community is an incredible way to build a successful career in 2024 understand that being great in 2024 isn't going to cut it photographers are going to need to be spectacular photographers are going to need to be spectacular and excellent in order to make it in 2024. Consistency in quality, consistency in delivery, and building confidence with your clients is gonna help you secure more jobs. So standing out is the first imperative that's gonna be happening for you in 2024, and I want you to be thinking about that. Number two, is specializing in a niche. This is something that so many photographers just don't ever get into a Gifted niche. Member. Let's go. Thank you so much, Vicky, for gifting a membership. Gifting five memberships, Vicky. Let's go, you crazy person. Vicky, thank you for gifted the gifteds. Let's you go. And the smoke machine is on. Let's go. So, Vicky, is where's my smoke machine? New member is not on. Welcome, everybody who just got gifted. Thank you so much, Vicky, and um, Merry Christmas to you. I appreciate you. Specializing in a niche. My God, those uh, those are very close together. So we're gonna fix. In, oops in a niche specializing i've made videos about it i've i've argued in the comments about it specializing in a niche in 2024 Whew. general photography 
you're going to see a decline in photographers who are doing just general photography. And you're going to see new specialized areas of photography increasing. Finding a niche can help you separate yourself in a very busy market. Also, <clears throat> videography and videography skills are going to become more and more important for marketing and storytelling, especially, especially on platforms like YouTube. And we're going to get into why I think emerging photographers should be thinking about video in a second. But specializing in a niche we're talking about if you love cars if you love skateboarding taking that thing that you love the most and trying to attach photography to it what's that thing that you're an expert in do you love fashion do you love street style do you love interacting with people are you a portrait photographer how can you attach lifestyle to your portraits or products attached to your portraits in order to make that niche a more profitable thing. Specializing in 2024 is going to be more important than ever. If you're not really sure about what your specialty should be, think about the umbrellas of people, places, or things. I am a people specialist. I am a people specialist. Don't get me wrong. I shoot places and I shoot things, but I'm known for shooting people. I market and promote that I am a people photographer, which involves all the different aspects of people photography. It keeps my niche loose, but tight enough that I can specialize in one area. So specializing in a niche is something that is... <laughs> 2024 i talk about it literally almost every video you got to specialize next the next big one is embracing technology embracing tech and on and technology i'm talking about everything from um your computer your ipad if you have one or your desktop like embracing technology is it's how we're going to get through i mean ai there's no secret that ai is taking over and it's improving efficiency in many areas but ai won't replace the unique skills that human photographers have ai won't replace the creative business mindset the creative photography mindset the lighting, the composition, the storytelling, like human photographers can't be replaced, but it's crucial to adapt how it and, and, and understand how AI is changing the industry. And if you're not using ChatGPT for some aspect of your photography, for some aspects of frameworks or for some aspects of like making yourself more efficient, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Use AI as your assistant. Use AI as your assistant, as your photography assistant. Not to make the photos, not to come up with the ideas, but to help you manage your business. So that is embracing technology, which in 2024, critical. The next one is prioritizing relationships and customer service. We have to be making relationships in order to be getting hired. Relationships and service. Our customer service, how we treat the people who choose to hire us, how they feel. Again, I've made whole videos about um, you can make sessions with you feel like this. It's all about giving your customers, giving your clients an experience and and that's really what we have to do so quality photography is important successful photography jobs involve more than just photography 
It involves building relationships and providing incredible customer service, incredible client service. And that will make, make your clients feel comfortable and more likely to call you again. I, I've said this story before. The first time that I ever assisted a photographer, this photographer opened the door and he was dressed in a kung fu uniform. He was wearing a gi. He had like a white belt. He had like a bandana tied around his head and he was doing like karate moves. And then he had me standing behind him and he was shooting Polaroids and pulling the Polaroid and throwing the Polaroid. And I was running around the studio and catching the Polaroids. The clients were on the floor laughing. The photography was amazing. He had amazing food, amazing music, just amazing vibes. And he was dressed like a Kung Fu guy and was speaking, I mean, you can't really do this now, but speaking in a fake Chinese accent while he was shooting the photos and throwing the Polaroids. At the end of the shoot, the clients left and Mir took the gi off, put on track pants, put on a sweatshirt, and he's like, hey man, what did you think? And I said, Mir, you're absolutely a lunatic. Like you had me running around chasing Polaroids and like, oh my God. And he's like, did you like the photography? And I was like, oh my God, the photography was incredible. He's like, did you think the clients had a good time? I'm like, oh my God, Mir, I saw one of your clients like literally pee his pants. Another one was like on the floor, like doubled over. He's like, do you think they had a good time? Come on, obviously. He's like, do you think they enjoyed the food? Holy mirror, like I've never seen such amazing food at a photo shoot. And the last thing he said was, do you think they'll call me again? Do you think they'll call me again? And I'm like, of course they'd call you again. Like, oh my God, you're crazy. He's like, this is what I do when I do photo shoots. I make it an experience because anyone can make the photos, but we have to make a photo shoot an experience. We have to make ourselves memorable. No one's in the business of making us famous. We have to create our own legend. And something clicked for me that day. And I realized that I could actually make people feel like that when they shot with me. I mean, I don't dress in Kung Fu outfits and like talk in funny accents, but I do create an environment around me when I'm shooting that makes everybody feel good and that makes everybody feel happy. And it makes me memorable and it makes people call me again. And I've been doing that since the day I saw that one photographer that I assisted do it. So we do have the ability to prioritize relationships and create amazing customer service. In fact, we can do it in the most nonlinear ways. So in 2024, there's a way that you can make your clients and your customers come, come back for years because of how you make them feel. It's all of, especially if you deal with people, making pictures of people, people will be convinced that there's no one on earth that can take a better photo of them than you. So it's amazing. So prioritize relationships and customer service in 2024. Now, another thing that I started last year, and I'm telling you, I should have started and did this five years ago, but I wasn't in the headspace. I wasn't in the mindset. I didn't have the the concepts i hadn't come to that framing of understanding i started writing last year february on a newsletter every single saturday and so far i've done it for 45 weeks in a row i'm on route to do it for 365 days or like you know 52 weeks in a row a whole year every week and <clears throat> growing and creating a blog, whatever platform you do it on, writing about your photography is so important. I created a brand. I, I didn't really know early what I was writing about, but I quickly realized that my blog was like the sister 
to my YouTube channel. I realized that some people would prefer to read the kind of content that I talk about rather than watching it in a video. Some people prefer to watch it in a video rather than reading about it. Some people do both. So I started blogging on a platform called Substack. And Substack has completely changed my perspective. I saw the owner of Substack on Joe Rogan, and he basically said, like, you know, he was a New York Times writer, and um, he got fired, and he had this incredible audience, and he didn't have a platform. He had the audience without the magazine, without the readers. So he decided that he would create a platform for writers to write and create their own media and create their own mailing list and get their own stuff out there to their own people and make it really easy to monetize. So I jumped on Substack and I started writing every single Saturday. And I've done that for, again, almost a year. My Substack is now has turned into a full online magazine. And the thing that's incredible about this platform is this platform actually has given me accountability. It's given me a place to actually get down my thoughts about the current state of professional photography and how I could actually help emerging photographers get to the next level. And it's a place where I can showcase the types of photography that don't really fit on my website because I'm a people photographer and I've been doing street photography and using street photography as a way to like help me with social anxiety. So I write words about the road to professional photography and helping you guys get to that next level. And I get to showcase this photography. So I highly suggest in 2023, oops, 2024, because I started in 2023, in 2024, that so you get onto blogging, get onto using, I mean, I, Substack, if I wasn't on Substack, my mailing list, I would say would maybe be 300 people because, and I started with eight people on my mailing list because I moved or started with Substack. I have almost a thousand people on my list. And so many of those people have come from Substack's network organically. So I love Substack. I love, I love the platform. I talk about it all the time. And I think photographers should be writing about their photography. For me, I coach emerging photographers. For you, you could be talking about your journey to making your first dollar with your camera. You could be talking about your journey to getting published the first time. Super easy, but um, again, I would definitely be doing it. Another thing that a lot of photographers do, but I believe they do it too early, is using YouTube for marketing. I feel like too many photographers start marketing on YouTube, or I wouldn't even say marketing. They just have a YouTube channel and they start teaching photographers when they're still learning themselves, which is unfortunate, but it happens. But YouTube is a powerful platform for showcasing your work and showcasing that work with a way wider audience. Creating content like tutorials, showing behind the scenes content, doing storytelling, just Showing your process and using YouTube as the place that you're showcasing that work is an incredible way to attract new fans and potential clients. You don't have to be using YouTube the way that any other photographer is using YouTube. You don't have to be using YouTube the way that I'm using YouTube, but I believe that video is a weapon and the photographers that understand that they're more than just photographers, they're actually content creators. The photographers that understand YouTube is an incredible platform for showcasing your work. Even if you're just doing slideshows and talk, like just a great place as 
Substack is a great place for writing and showcasing your photography. YouTube is a great place for talking and showcasing your photography. So the mailing list is what the other big value of having a newsletter is. I didn't understand the power of the mailing list. And in 2024, the mailing list is your weapon. It's your weapon. And how you utilize it, again, is through Substack. But when you now want to have a sale, when you now want to have personal connections with these people, when you want to turn your mailing list subscribers into potential clients, <laughs> It's crazy because wherever you build a newsletter or a mailing list or a blog, I mean, my suggestion is doing it as a mailing list because then you collect people's email addresses. Just blogging on your website, people can come, see it and go, but you there's no you don't you can't make people go to your website, but if you send them an email, that is going to guarantee that you're seeing that they're seeing their your content. And I have like a 60% open rate with my emails. So there's value in an email list and you can directly talk about sales, promotions, you can directly talk about your process behind the scenes, you can let people in and clients wanna hire people that they know. Clients wanna hire people that they like. Clients want to hire their friends. So the quickest way that you can become friendly with the, your client is by putting yourself out there and showing your personality so they can actually see you and like you first before they, content, before they contact you. And that's also a way that you can attract the right customers. So I've made videos about this as well. 2024, pushing outside your comfort zone is how you are going to break through in 2024. Pushing outside your comfort zone. That is how, that's how we're gonna do it. Outside your comfort zone. We have to avoid complacency. We have to continue to grow. And in order to, how we do that is by taking on new challenges and subjects or photography projects that are outside your typical scope. We actually have to do things different than we've always done them. If what you've been doing hasn't worked so far, why are you still doing it the same way? Why not approach it from a different angle? Pushing outside your comfort zone, taking on new challenges, you're going to find unexpected new creativity. You're going to find new perspectives and you're going to open new doors to new opportunities. It's going to happen with guaranteed success if you lean in and, and be, try to make yourself a little bit more uncomfortable. Unfortunately, photographers get comfortable and when we get comfortable, we no longer learn. And then we just do the same thing over and over again. And we just make more photos that nobody's looking at, that nobody cares about, you know? Push outside of your comfort zone. That's how we're going to make it in 2024. So the, the world's most valuable resource, by the way, is not our money. It is our time. So our time can't re be renewed. So as a photographer aiming for success, we have to realize that our time is super specific. So it's helpful if we create goals. And for you, I'm suggesting that you create goals for yourself in 2024. Many of you have watched my uh, episode where I have photog my, the photographers that watch me make videos and submit them about where they are right now, where they wanna be in a year. You'll see um, many of them who are goal oriented meet the goals every single year and then they set new goals for the next one. So set some attainable goals and realize that time is our most valuable resource and if you spoke if you focus on many different things it's impossible to achieve mastery at any one thing. If photography is just one of the things that you're doing along all these other things 
you only get 100% of time. You only get 100%. And if you're only giving photography 20%, then it's impossible for that to grow at the rate that you're expecting. If you're only shooting photos once a month, it's impossible for your photography to grow at the rate that it would if you were shooting every day. So again, your time, it's, in, it's not renewable. And if you're not shooting photos, you're not growing. And that's just extending how long it's going to take for you to start. So time is uh, unfortunately not, not stopping. So I, I touched a little bit on this, but I go all in on one thing. I'm actually against diversification when it comes to becoming a professional photographer. You can call it specializing, but if you really think about it, it's, it's like the more diverse you are, the less focus that you have on any one thing. Successful photographers go all in on one thing. Diversifying early might seem wise, but it's diluting your effort. Warren Buffett said, we're advised to invest heavily, heavily in our strongest area. Invest heavily in your strongest area. If, you're, if you look and make all kinds of photos and you're really a natural people photographer, why are you spending any time shooting cars? Why are you spending any time shooting products? Why not go all in and deepen your knowledge and your skills on shooting people? That's, um, I'm against diversification. And... You've heard me talk about the entrepreneurial journey in photography. And I want you to ask yourself where you are on your entrepreneurial journey in photography. The journey goes like this. And it starts right here as an uninformed optimist where we don't know what we don't know. And we pick up a camera, we see other people with cameras, we see other people making a living and we're like, I'm gonna do that too. We buy a camera and we go and we think we're a photographer. We're an uninformed optimist. Of course that crests, of course that crests. And we get to the point where, oh shit, now we're here in spot two, which is now we're an informed pessimist. And at that point, this is number one, this is number two. At that point, we're stuck because now we, we're starting to realize there's so much about professional photography that we don't know. Then we get here. And unfortunately, that point is where everybody quits. And that is called the Valley of Despair. And the Valley of Despair is the place that many photographers find me. Many photographers have a really hard time getting past this point. People just quit and start another thing and they go through the whole cycle again. But what we're trying to do is get through this and get to here, which is now an informed optimist. Oop, an informed optimist. Now we know we're learning. We're starting to put systems together. We're starting to understand, oh my God, I do get this. I can make this work. You have your website, you have your niche. You, you understand how to find clients and market to them. And you're starting to get success. And then we keep on pushing on that. And then up here, we achieve success. And then we maintain it. That's the goal. And then once we've done this, we can start it over with maybe video. But any business that you start is going to go through these five stages. Every single business that you start is going to go through these five stages. So ask yourself, where are you right now at the beginning of 2024? And what are you going to do to get to this spot right here? Success. And know that you will hit the valley of despair and it is ugly and you're going to want to quit but if you keep doing the work and keep doing the research you'll find the information that's going to help you get to the next step and help you get out of that valley of despair and into the informed optimist so 
we have to build for the long game. And I want you to think about 2024 as the beginning of you building for the long game. The reason that I talk <clears throat> about blogging is for accountability. The reason that I talk about YouTube is for accountability and consistency and getting used to talking about your photography, getting used to talking to camera, getting used to talking to camera helps you talk to strangers, helps you talk to, helps you talk to clients. So you got to build for the long game, understanding design, understanding making websites, understanding marketing. There's so many hats that we have to wear. 2024 is, is the year that you really start to build that structure out that you can turn into a business. <sighs> so understanding video, understanding typography, these skills add extra value to our work and open up possible revenue streams. And uh, every photographer has to have these skills in 2024. You got to learn how to shoot a short video. You got to learn how to shoot a short, short story, you know? So um, I'm interested in what your plans are. I'm going to take some questions for the next little part of the episode as far as what your where you're at in your career and what you think that you need to do in order to get to the next spot for the next little bit i'm asking you for a little bit of self-assessment many of you are new many of you who watch me on sundays um aren't able to chat during my ask a photo pro tuesday thursday streams or the time doesn't work for you because of your time zone or whatever so um, I want to hear from you in the comments. Do let me know where you are on your journey. Are you an informed optimist? Are you, are you an uninformed optimist? Are you an informed pessimist? Are you in the value of the valley of despair? Or are you successful and you're just watching me for entertainment? I'm very curious. Um, so be easy says I got to put more time and effort into working my brand, working and building my brand. And uh, John McDivitt says the best time to plant a tree. And that is the beginning of a statement, which is the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today. So I appreciate with that. Let's go. Um, Romeo sending good vibes as always. I appreciate you. Let's go, Romeo. Thank you for always being a great gifted supporter. Member. Calligraphy is continuing with the gifted membership and he has now gifted a membership almost every episode for months now. So George Gerardo, you just got gifted a membership from our man Calligraphy. Thank you so much, Calligraphy. Again, I'm here for questions. You guys just have to type command Q in chat, which uh, looks like this. Command Q. Just type that. Question. And then I'll hear that you have a question. And then you can type your question, just like you see in chat there. Um, so John says, I'm a step from success. I'm here to get over that hump. Let's go, John. Listen, I'm going to help you get there, man. That's amazing. And know that, um, know that you can do this. You can do this with the right support from the right community. And again, we have that community. We have that community right here for you. For you. Join the Discord. The Discord's the spot. Cedric says, I'm taking photos and videos to the next level. That's amazing, Cedric. Again, that kind of confidence, um, that's what you need. That's what you need. And that's what your clients need, that kind of confidence from you. But for you, you also have to deliver the goods. You have to deliver the goods. And how you deliver the goods is by making sure that you're looking at the right reference material. By Vogue, by Italian Vogue look at behance see what people in your market are doing and then be better um black phoenix says um you're learning to build relationships you finally got your an everyday shooting schedule down black phoenix is somebody who's been 100 percent dedicated to improving her photography and Yo, knows that the on, the other alternative is working nine to five for someone else's dreams. So 
<laughs> Yo, Black Phoenix isn't about it. And she is working hard to set herself up for success. So I'm here for all of you. I'm here for every single one of you that's trying to better yourselves and better your photography career. It's what we all have to do. Um, someone has a question. So, um, Xperia says, Xperia says, I need to improve my courage um, when it comes to being confident. And I've been feeling more comfortable lately. Confidence comes from, uh, confidence comes from basically experience. And experience comes from reps. So the only way to feel confident is by shooting as, as often as you can, by doing the reps. And even if you're walking down the right, the wrong road, walk it like it's the right one, you know? And until you realize, hey, this is the wrong road, but I went the whole way. That's why like, I'll, I'll try an idea and I'll beat a dead horse to be like, okay, I tried that, didn't work. Let's try another idea, you know? Just to say you tried it. Unfortunately, too many photographers self-edit. We edit great ideas out of our head. In the age of digital photography, we can basically, once you have the equipment, you can shoot for free. But we have a great idea and we're like, nah, that's stupid. And then we don't do it. So we have to stop editing ideas out of our head. Map them out. Execute them. See what it looks like. See if, in fact, it is a great idea or if it's a silly idea. But... Ideas are valid, so um, we need to change that perspective in 2024. Huvestein, um, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for the love. I appreciate you. Sergio Garcia, what is up? Sergio's been watching me for years. Sergio is an incredible, incredible photographer. You guys should know about Sergio Garcia. I like to showcase Sergio Garcia around um, around Halloween because Sergio makes the kind of photos that will make you feel a little scared. Sergio makes incredibly scary photographs very, very, very well. This is Picks by Sergio, also known as Sergio Garcia, a viewer who's been watching me for over two years now. Incredibly, incredibly talented, Sergio. Picksbysergio.com, if you guys are wondering. Um, yeah, so questions, questions. And again, do you want to talk about niches? Do you want to talk about niches? <laughs> You want to talk about niches? You want to talk about niches? Sergio. So, you understand Sergio has... A whole other side of his photography like he has the dark and i'm trying to help him develop the light so he has that dichotomy of yin and yang of light and dark some clients won't want that look some clients won't want that dark they're gonna want that light so that's the next thing you know questions guys give me more questions um Sergio, Sergio, more behind the scenes is all I, I, I'll always, I'll always ask for more behind the scenes. So here's, here's a thing. Um, that's a great way to use video. That's a great way to use video in 2024 is BTS. Start right there. Um, cause here's the question. How do I incorporate video into my photography business? Behind the scenes. You show behind the scenes. You show the how, the why, and the what you're doing. And you don't need to show the where or the when, but the why, the why is inherently you. And your why, your how, 
and your what now becomes inherently you and you can showcase that behind the scenes what that does is it gives people insight on what it would be like to work with you you're giving people insight on what it their experience could be shooting with you shooting a behind the scenes and then putting that on instagram hey here's a behind the scenes of my latest shoot you get to show with a behind the scenes your expertise you also get to show your style with video you get to show your humor you get to show how fun you are and you get to show your talent all with a five minute video a five minute behind the scenes video video is a weapon i'm gonna show you how much of a video weapon is treat everybody like a superstar famous people less like a superstar i treat famous people like real people i started as a photographer i would say professionally when i was 20. my brother's a fine art painter heavily influence on me and i couldn't paint so when i discovered the camera it was really easy for me to express myself creatively Everybody's in the business of glorifying celebrities. So capturing them, it's already glorifying them by photographing them. So if I can get them a little bit more understated, I feel like it brings up the real. In 1997, I shot Tom York from Radiohead. Most important picture of my career. In 2001, I shot Pharrell Williams for Peace Magazine. Again, very important picture. Colin Firth, a week before he won his Oscar, career moving pictures where that picture propels a whole new wave of clients, a whole new wave of people looking at my work. I think pivotal career changing pictures are more important than favorite pictures because they're all my favorites. The whole idea is make good stuff and share it and do it every day. So you see, that's a promo. That's a promo more than anything. And I use that on my YouTube channel as my trailer, but that's a promo. And you see someone who watches that, it's 90 seconds. I have that on my website. When you go to my about page, it plays that video. You see that video on my about page because you get to hear me talk about my style. You get to hear me talk about my methodology, why I make pictures, like all of that is encapsulated. Plus you're seeing me shooting. Plus you're seeing shots flying. Like why do you not have a promo video on your about page instead of just text? It sells you so much more than just a straight photo. It sells you so much more than just a regular bio. So, that's the question. How would I use video in 2024? Where would I start? The first thing I would say is make a video for your about page. And this is the video that you click and play right there on my about page. So that's what if people want to read about me, they can read about me. But there's a grabby picture and there's a video that just holds people's attention and my contact page is very much my like my about page it's very visual it's showing me working with people looking at my camera like i'm not smiling and looking at camera it's actually me in action and testimonials where people are raving about me so um it's important use video that's the way in 2024 especially on your website and even if you just make one one video that's talking about your process and why you do this thing called photography why you love it and why you're dying to work for the person who's watching the video 
you need to do it. It's a, it's a killer. It absolutely is. And it makes, it, it gets me so many meetings. Like you don't understand how many people watch, look at my website and they're like, wow, Cardi, like I had to call you. So yeah. Sergio says, I will have to work on video in 2024. Sergio, I talked to you about that in 2022. And I talked about that with you in 2023. And now we're coming around in 2024. 2024, this is the year that your head mindset, mind headspace clicks and you start making videos. I feel it. I feel it. Um, listen, by the way, you made a video and don't like it. So here's the next thing is that you think, you think that your first videos, by the way, oh my God, you're so funny. Sergio thinks that his first videos are going to be good. <laughs> Bro, you think your first videos are supposed to be good? Your first videos are going to be horrible, but you have to make them and you have to put them out because that's how your next video is better. If you just keep making it and being, no, no, not good enough. Make another one, not good enough. Make another one, not good enough. Like you'll never share anything. Look at my first, look at my first podcast. Look at my first videos. Guess what? I stayed with it and I kept posting them and I leave them up there so you can see the progress of how much better my videos are getting. You know, don't be afraid, man. You just do it. Like photographers have to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect or we don't do it. And that's another thing. It's like if we can't achieve mastery on the first attempt, we don't want to do it. And you've achieved mastery, Sergio, with your photography. You've achieved mastery with your style and your niche and all of that. So now achieving mastery the same way with video, you're expecting it to happen the first try. It can't possibly because you haven't done the reps, but you're just like, no, I'm going to just, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about it for years and then I'm going to make a video and that one will be perfect. No, that one's still going to be shit. It's like, just do the reps and put them out. And the more your 10th behind the scenes will be better than your first one. Your 20th will be better than your 10th one. Every video is better than the last one, but there's no videos if you don't make them and start sharing them. Um, so yeah, <laughs> practice makes improvement. That's right. And of course, it's a good uh, point. Um, Morgan says, do I need specialty equipment to do video? If you have a camera that shoots video, um, then no, I have, uh, I shoot R5 and I bought this because of the video capabilities. I bought this because of the video capabilities. It shoots 8k raw video. It shoots 4k 120. It's as a video rig and I have a whole setup, like I take the grip off and blah, blah, blah. And then I set it up as a video rig or I take the great, the cage off and blah, blah, blah. And the handle and the monitor. And I set it up like this. So, um, I'll have a second R5, but what I did do is I have two other mirrorless, like these cameras, I have an R50, a Canon R50, which is an RF lens camera with a 16 millimeter here. And I have another one right there. So I have two, um, you can see it if I move this monitor a little. I have an R50 there and I have an R50 over there. So my main cameras are now mirrorless and I shoot my YouTube videos with this one, like this one I shoot my YouTube videos with lately because I'm holding, I need to hold my R5 often in my videos. This camera shoots 4K 30. Um, it's an APS-C sensor, but um, people have not noticed any quality difference because it's still a Canon Digi 10 sensor. It's literally almost the same. It's the same sensor, only just a smaller version. So um, yeah, 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 yeah. Video. Um, do you need uh, especially equipment? No, you need a camera and a lens and a tripod and then a microphone. Don't have that? Here's your video maker right here. Shoot with your phone. Shoot with your phone. Shoot with your phone. Not this way. Shoot with your phone this way. Literally. Because you can take the vertical video from the horizontal if you center your subject. Um, yeah, don't shoot. Don't shoot this because you can't repurpose this anyway. You can't repurpose vertic vertical video anyway. Use horizontal. It looks 
photographic and cinematic, even if you're shooting with your phone. So if you're shooting with your phone, you can use the internal mic as for your from the phone and just talk into it. And it's the want to step it up, get a lavalier mic with your phone, want to step it up, jump into your mirrorless camera, get wireless mics, um, get a shotgun mic. There's so many different ways to do it, but you have to do it. You have to do it. Like you have to just start. Then again, this is why I asked you guys to record something, record yourself on video to see that it's not actually that hard and inspire you to do it more. That was the whole point. So give me some more questions, guys, before we wrap up. Black Phoenix is asking for perfect pixels. I am not sure what perfect pixels mean um, in that perspective exactly. Give me a little bit more um, uh, understanding with uh, perfect pixels. Not sure if that's an answer to something else or a question. Um, so you're asking, be easy. When I'm building my knowledge and brand, what time, what type of camera matters while you're learning? I, be, I believe you can learn on any camera that you can understand. I mean, I've been shooting Canon cameras in Hasselblad um, since uh, 19, like 89. Started shooting Canon in 89, 80, 88, around there, maybe 87 even. Um, yeah, I, I had the Canon EOS 650, the world's first autofocus S 35 millimeter camera, SLR. Um, and I've been shooting Canon ever since, but the lens choice for me is the most important thing. And for me, it's a camera body and a 50. That's how you learn photography. And any type of photography that you want to do it starts with a 50 millimeter lens and a camera body because you'll learn, oh, you know what? I wish this was a bit wider. And then you buy a 35 or a 24 or a 28, or you'll be like, oh, I wish I could get a little bit closer. And then you buy an 85 or a 100 millimeter, depending on the type of photography you do. But you start with a 50. Too many people start with the kit lens, which is the 18 to 55, 3.5 to 4.5. There's no depth of field. There's no real depth of field. It's a floating aperture. It's got a plastic mount. Like, they're garbage. It's just something that they put in the box so you can take photos right away. But it's not really a lens that anyone uses in a serious way. So if you're using the kit lens, one of these things, like this is a 18 to 45. Like, if you have one of these, like just open a window and just throw it out your nearest window. The reason that I have one of these is because I bought two bodies. One of them I bought with a lens and one I bought body only. When I, I thought this lens would be usable for my photography streams, but I realized as soon as I got this lens that it was absolutely shit for video as well as shit for photography. So it sits on my counter. I, the price I paid for this lens is about $80. So an $80 lens, like let's look at the quality of this lens, shall we? Have a look at this. This is high quality. Plastic mount. Plastic mount. Um, This is garbology. So you can't build a photography career with a kit lens. Buy a 50, they're 200 bucks. They're 1.8 f-stop usually, and your photography will go from here to here overnight just by buying that lens. So nifty 50. It, not only is it one of my main lenses, it's the lens, that's, uh, it's the lens that I use 50% of the time, my 50, and then all the other 50% of the time, all my other six lenses share that 50%. <laughs> um, but then I also use my 85, 20% of that. So, I mean, really, it's 50, 85, then 100. Those are the three main that I, that I mess with. Um, so, Paul says he started photography nine months ago, mostly sports with a Nikon D5, and based on demand, added video and grabbed a Sony A7 IV. Because you're brand new, um, Paul, my my vibe is is that you're in the in the phase where you don't know where you, what you don't know. You've just started, and I appreciate that. Um, just do all the research that you can, and look at, I mean, if you're doing sports, sports photography, um, the first person that I would look at 
is um, Bill Frakes. I would look at Bill Frakes. Bill Frakes is a Sports Illustrated uh, sports photographer, and he shoots lifestyle. And the whole idea about sports photography is that you're not you're not just shooting sports. You're shooting all the things that are happening around the sport. And Bill Frakes. Um, Again, this guy shoots for Sports Illustrated, but when you look at his portfolio and look at the range of his work, it's um it's quite deep. Let me get into um let's say games. I think that's what he calls sport. So this is his Sports Illustrated sports photography. This is the level that he does it at. But still, his sports photography doesn't look like a typical sports photographer. So um, this, use these kinds of photographers to look at for inspiration. I really believe that um, it's way more than just shooting games when it comes to being a sports photographer, you really can take it to a level that like you might not even have thought of. And the other photographer is Walter Yos. Yes, Walter Yos, Ios, yes. Um, no, Ios. Ios. Photographer. Um, there it is, Walter Yost Jr. This is the next shooter that I would look at as far as sport. He's shot, this guy has shot, again, another Sports Illustrated photographer. This is Michael Jordan. This is Walter Yost Jordan. He is premier sports photographer. So I hope, Paul, that inspires you. You need to be looking at photography that makes you want to quit. If you're not looking at photography that makes you want to literally hang up your camera, you're not looking at the right photographers. Um, so Walter Yost and Bill Frakes. And Yos has been doing this for like 40 years, okay? <laughs> so if you want to like find like true, like you just started, you picked up a camera nine months ago, you know what I mean? So understand these guys have been doing it for 50, I've been doing it for 33 years professionally. So again, this is a photographer you need to look at. And the last photographer that I would say that you need to look at unequivocally is Michael Muller. Michael Muller is one of the most prolific photographers of people. He shoots every celebrity you've ever seen. He shoots every movie poster that you've ever seen, like literally Michael Muller shoots every movie poster that you've ever seen. He shot every magazine cover, but his sports photography, like this Time Magazine cover of Kobe Bryant, like you have to think as an editorial photographer, not as a person who is shooting things that are happening, which is called taking pictures. You have to make pictures making pictures within the sports realm you have to be thinking about making photos not just taking them michael muller um and how far he's taken every single every single one of um his like <laughs> every single one of his genre music editorial entertainment like he shot Deadpool. Like, he's the guy. Muller.
So again, and how did Mueller start? How did Mueller start? Well, he photographed Batman smoking crack. It's like, what? No, he photographed Batman smoking crack. Like Michael Mueller wanted to shoot movie posters so badly, but he couldn't get a break. So he would go to Sunset Boulevard and find characters that were dressed up like Snow White and like, uh, you know, these kind of crazy Hollywood characters. And he would make these funny photos with these characters. And then he did a gallery show. And one of the photos that he made was Batman literally smoking crack. And he was hanging out with this Batman character. And Batman was like, hey, buddy, do you mind if we just go to the garage for a second? And Mulder's like, yeah, okay, cool. And then he pulled out a crack pipe and started smoking crack. And then Mueller was like, hey, dude, can I take a photo of this? And Batman's like, I don't give a fuck. And he shot this photo. And this photo ended up being sold. And the person who bought this photo was a huge Hollywood exec. And that guy found the photographer and he's like, hey, dude, I want you to make, I want you to shoot a movie poster for me. And Michael's like, what? Finally, like my big break? Like, what do you want me to do? And he's like, I want you to shoot Batman smoking crack. Like he wanted him to imitate this style for this movie poster. So that is how Michael Muller went from shooting like this, which was basically just portraits to being a household name and the most sought after portrait photographer, entertainment photographer in the world. So, um, lean into the unknown, do funny shit, try, make statements, be polarizing, do shit that's crazy with your camera. And in 2024, you'll break through. Like you have to, there actually is no other way. That's Michael Muller. And that my friend, Paul is the fourth or the third photographer you should be looking at. I hope that inspires. Guys, good episode. Do you feel charged for your year? As we do some episodes this week, Tuesday and Thursday, we are going to be talking about really like, like, let's really get into like plans. Let's make a plan for you for 2024. You're going to do this in January. You're going to do this in February, March, April. And by May, you're going to have all these systems moving. So you can now add in this one and add in this one. Let's structure your year and get you going in 2024. So my God, whatever that goal is for you, you not only hit it, you 10 X it. If that's making $1,000 a month with your camera, maybe it's making 10,000 bucks a month. For me, like <laughs> my year this year with my camera was absolutely insane. I got jobs this year where I got paid $10,000 a day times four one week. One, like I made $53,000 in four days <laughs> this year with my camera. So like usage, quoting, uh, understanding how to invoice, understanding licensing, Ooh, all that stuff, man. I mean, which I talk about and I talked about back then and I talk about in my pricing videos and all this stuff, like, and I explain literally how an invoice can become $50,000 just like that. <laughs> so yeah, guys. And also if I had of not shot video, that invoice would have been 20,000. But because I could shoot video, that invoice was 50,000. And they were going to hire a video team and me to do photos. And then they hired me to do everything. And I was the video team and I made all the photos. So I basically over two X my income. You guys can do it too. I hope you found this informative, guys. Thank you, everybody who gifted subscriptions today. By the way, last opportunity for questions. You got to hit Command Q if you want a question or you want me to answer something. But know that like all the stuff that you've learned up until this point is setting you up for the success that's going to happen in 2024. But 
you have to do the reps. You actually have to dig in and do the work because there's actually absolutely nobody who's going to do it for you. When you let your ball stop bouncing, that metaphorically photography ball that's bouncing, when you stop pushing down on it and it comes to a rest, it takes a great effort to get your photography ball bouncing back again. You got to smack it which sometimes is shocking and hurts your system to have to get smacked to like get yourself back going or you got to physically pick it up and start the process all again and some people don't have the strength to pick them hold their whole selves up and change direction and start again so don't stop that ball from bouncing just control where that ball is bouncing guys i hope this brought you value today if i didn't bring you any value i hope i brought you a little bit of entertainment know that the hardest part really is showing up when it comes to this photography game but 2024 it is your year it is here it is for you to take it's for you to be successful and you know you got this guys thank you so much for watching me on this very special christmas eve merry christmas Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy holidays. Thank you so much for your continued support. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Appreciate you all. Be easy, you so welcome. Thank you so much. Dan Pye, Merry Christmas to you. Preserve memories. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm always trying to bring value. I'm always trying to bring value. Rootsman Chin. How many assistants did I need for that 20K, 50K job? I had two assistants. My main assistant, Jay, I had every day. And my second assistant, Ray, I had on three of the four days. So I have a crew. I have a team. I have five makeup and hair artists that I use. I have one assistant who is my main assistant. I have an apprentice who helps at times. Guys, this commercial-free episode, by the way, was brought to you by the 200 members of this channel. We have hit 200 members. 200 people in the Cardi crew. Make sure you're in the Discord. Make sure you join your YouTube channel to the Discord in order to get all the benefits that membership gives. Most importantly, the photo reviews. Photo reviews happen every Thursday. We didn't do last Thursday because I was in Montreal, but this Thursday we'll be looking at photography. If you became a subscriber, you just saw your name scroll across the bottom of the screen. Guys, I have tons of amazing content like Black Phoenix says, please hit the like button if this brought you content, brought you value. And also lastly, please consider making a comment because comments on live streams after they end, make them go out to more people. I appreciate you. Preserved Memories just became a member. Preserved Memories, thank you. I appreciate you. Guys, you member. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Merry Christmas.